Hello, welcome back to Junk Botics. My name is Andrew. Today I want to talk about sensors. So what are sensors and why do we need them? Well, without sensors, your robot's nothing more than a programmable toy. But with sensors, it can now explore the world and it opens up numerous challenges for both you and your robot. So what kind of sensors does your robot need? Well, that really depends on what you plan on using your robot for. If your robot's going to be used for fighting fires, for instance, it's going to need to know where the fire's at. If your robot's going to be used for vacuuming floors, it's going to need to know where the dirt is at on the floor and maybe where it's at inside the room. But if your robot's going to be used as a self-driving vehicle, well, first and foremost, it's going to need to know what is in front of it. So what kind of sensors are available for your robot? Well, fortunately, there are plenty available. Unfortunately, they're probably one of the parts of your robot that you're going to have to purchase new. But that's okay, because they're low cost, and they're available everywhere. So let's take a look at a few. Okay, so we have here a variety of different sensors that I've gotten out of a kit that I had. Now you can see that they're composed of many different kinds of parts, and most of these parts are fairly low cost individually. Now you could purchase some of these parts and build your own sensors if you really wanted to, or you could possibly even find the individual parts as junk elsewhere. And if you have them, you know, I encourage you to go ahead and try that. But if you don't, it's probably cheaper just to go ahead and buy a set of modules like this, at least for experimentation purposes. So let's take a look at some of these uh, sensors. Well, uh, let's uh, first one here. This one's a very common sensor. This one here is meant to uh, basically f it, it's a it's it's a photo photo transistor pair uh, that senses lines more than anything else. It's got this little sensor right here that sends out an IR signal from one LED and bounces off of whatever that is, you know, reflective, like a white line or, you know, if, or on a white surface, a black line. It doesn't reflect off the black line, but it can tell where the black line is and bounces back and hits the other sensor. And whenever it senses the difference between white and black, it can, you know, send a signal back to uh, your embedded system, and then your embedded system can take uh, command of whatever it needs to do, whether it needs to move right or left or do something else. You could also have it facing, say, you know, in a different direction, like toward a wall or something, and, you know, out in front to be able to sense, you know, if, is there something in the way. And, you know, that's another possibility that you could use this sensor for. This sensor here is a tilt sensor. If you look at it kind of carefully, I don't know if you can really tell, but the sensor is like kind of tilted in one direction. It's uh, lifted off of the board by one little bit, and uh, the other side, the other end of it, this end here, is closer to the board. And it has like a little ball bearing or something inside of it, so that whenever it tilts, it makes a switch contact, and your your embedded system can detect that. I don't know what you could use this necessarily for on a robot because you know in you know some of these robots are going to be bouncing around and everything and this thing's just going to shake but there might be something you could think of to use it for so you know that's just another one that you can get this one here is in a similar vein it's actually a uh, vibration sensor it has a it has basically a little spring in it that's kind of weighted and um, a central contact and whenever it is vibrated, it uh, it can basically closes that switch and can you know it can basically tell your embedded system you know that well there's some vibration happening, you know maybe it could be used as an earthquake detector. You could build an earthquake detecting robot. <laughs> I don't know. This one here is a uh, IR sensor. It's uh, mainly meant to uh, sense remote control signals. You know, you could take a remote control from, say, a television or uh, something else that sends out IR signals, and you can sense the signals with uh, this particular little module. It's got this little uh, sensor right here. And um, then those signals will go back to the uh, embedded system, and you can interpret them in order to control your robot by remote control or something. This module is to detect sounds. It just basically detects whether it's a sharp noise or a loud noise or a soft noise. 
and uh, can send that information back to your embedded system. You could use this, for example, for it to detect whether something is walking nearby, maybe, or whether somebody sh claps sharply, or something of that nature. This one's kind of interesting because, well, it's kind of singular. There's, there's only one sensor, this little sensor right here. It senses light. But if you built something, you, you can get these individual light sensors separately, and you could actually build what's called a low vision eye. Um, you know, so it basically could give your, your system extremely limited but useful vision capabilities um, if, you, uh, if you set it up right. Um, be, and what I mean by low vision, I mean that it doesn't have a lot of resolution. Uh, this one, well, it's only got one element of resolution, but it can detect various levels of lightness versus darkness. In a actual system, you could actually have, you know, several of these. Uh, you could build, you could even build an array if you wanted to, say like an 8x8 array and have 64 elements and be able to use it to detect uh, simple, simple shapes. Or you could put a lens in front of it and uh, have focus the light onto the various uh, mo various elements and be able to detect uh, you know some you know well <laughs> it's going to be kind of like a blind blind robot but it'll have more vision than having none of these um, the other thing you can possibly do something that I thought about but I've never actually actually built yet is what if you took a bunch of these and you lined the inside of, of a cup-like shape, like a, a, a hemispherical shape on the inside, and you had them all pointed in and then you had a lens in front of it. Well, with that, you could, you'd still have low vision and you'd have all these individual elements. I don't know how many. I've always guessed somewhere over 100. And... Um, but with the, with the lens and with all the elements and with them at various angles, you could then determine what direction the, the you know, something is walking past or something, you know, it, it basically gives it a directional uh, ability of knowing where something is happening within its visual range. Something to think about. Finally, this sensor is what's called a knock sensor. Apparently, you're supposed to actually place this onto a door or something. And uh, when somebody knocks, it uh, vibrates this little sensor in here, makes contact as a switch, and uh, can detect that vibration so that you could actually have, like, say, a knock code on your door so you can, you know, bang on the door in a certain pattern and your embedded system could determine that pattern and use it to unlock or op open the door or do some other action. I'm not exactly sure whether or what you could use that for on a robot, but it's another possibility, something to think about. And there's plenty of other of these little module sensors available, and, you know, it's just something that you have to look into. But I want to show you a few other modules that I have that are actually more interesting to me as far as my robot is concerned, because they're more focused on what you'd be considered a uh, self-driving vehicle, and more of the robotic uh, type thing of basically path planning and where am I at in the world. Okay, now I want to show you a few sensors that are more applicable to a self-driving vehicle type concept if you're wanting to explore that. They're useful for other robotics experiments too, but uh, again, they're more, they're more for something that's like a self-driving vehicle. What I have here is I have a variety of sensors, well, four of them, and uh, some of them are probably familiar to you if you've uh, been looking at sensors for your robots. First off, I want to show you, you know, what's probably the most common one, which is this one here. Uh, this one is, of course, a uh, ultrasonic sensor. It uh, measures distance. Uh, the uh, embedded system can send a signal to it to tell it to send, a, to send an ultrasonic signal out, bounces back off, and it can tell the distance to uh, whatever that, uh, you know, whatever it happens to be nearby. Um, it has uh, it has some uh, some upsides and downsides. Its biggest downside is probably that soft surfaces don't reflect sound sound waves very well. Um, so you know it can't measure you know to certain uh, certain kinds of objects that are soft. I guess uh, you know a hard wall surface would be fine, but something like a pillow on the ground, well, you know it's going to have problems getting getting information from that. This here is what is known as whoops, <laughs> is what is known as a, a Sharp IR sensor. It's as you can see, it's manufactured by a company named Sharp. Um, they're a major electronics company. 
Um, this, uh, this is basically another distance sensor. It sends out a light signal that can bounce off of a surface and returns back and can tell the distance to that surface as well. It, uh, it's not as uh, it's not as uh, accurate or uh, you know narrow I guess narrow beam width or whatever you want to call it as the ultrasonic sensor is, but um, it has the advantage that it can pick up certain certain things that the ultrasonic sensor wouldn't be able to, such as you know a soft surface, providing that that soft surface unfortunately isn't a, a matte type color. Like for instance, if it was a pillow. The ultrasonic surface would, you know, the ultrasonic sensor would have a problem with it, but um, if the pillow happened to be something like made out of black velvet, well, then this this light sensor is going to have problems with dark colors that don't reflect light very well, and black velvet is probably among the worst. Um, but other surfaces, such as a white pillow, it would be able to do it just fine. So if you paired these two sensors up you could uh, be able to detect both kinds of uh, things possibly. Then we have here, this is a GPS sensor. Uh, more useful for robots that are outside than inside because GPS doesn't work very well inside, but it can tell you the position of where your robot is at in the real world, on outside, outdoors at least. And then finally we have this sensor here, which is probably the most unique of these sensors. This is a LiDAR unit from a NEATO XV11 or XV21 uh, vacuum floor cleaning robot. And it basically has uh, something similar to the uh, Sharp IR sensor. Um, this, uh, this, uh, these two holes here, basically a laser is sent out one and receives a signal back to the other, uh, to the other sensor using oh, what's called uh, par parallax uh, distance measurement essentially. I have links on to, on the uh, Junkbotics GitHub website that'll detail a lot of this stuff. Basically it this thing spins in a 360 degree circle and measures out to however far to whatever other obstacles and its only problem that it has really is its distance isn't very far and it's kind of slow it only rotates about 300 rpm and um, so for a fast moving vehicle it might have some problems. Um, it also doesn't work very well in sunlight. It's more meant for indoor usage. So, you know, but uh, all of these sensors, most these two here, relatively inexpensive. You know, you're not going to spend much for either one of these. GPS sensor, mm -mm, you know, could be could be a little bit more expensive. This is a surplus so you know your your mileage is going to vary on how much you spend there but you can expect to be somewhere between twenty to fifty dollars on it unfortunately um, the other possibility that you can use for a sensor well it's going to be this thing right here this <laughs> this camera right here uh, well actually the whole unit the the phone you can use a phone as as a sensor if you wanted to, and uh, there are people that have done that. So you know, I'll be detailing that as well on the uh, on the on the GitHub site. So you know, be sure to check out uh, that stuff out on the Junkbox GitHub, and uh, then from here, you know, we're just going to go and you know discuss uh, how we're going to mount a particular sensor. This actually, this one right here, on to uh, my robot. So that's where we're going next. So as we saw in the previous video on building a deck for your robot, I built this deck on this uh, particular chassis of mine that I made out of pegboard. And in the process of building it, I, you know, did it in a certain fashion. One thing I did is I made the number of holes going in one direction and the other be an odd number. In this case, if I remember right, I've got seven holes this way. And if I remember right, I have uh, 11 holes this way. So, um, you know, essentially I have a central hole right here, which is uh, basically um, six holes in and four holes over. So, you know, this is, you know, basically is basically, you know, it's not the middle of the robot, but it's, you know, it's in the middle of the deck. And uh, by having things kind of, you know, that way, it makes things a little bit easier on how you can place, place things onto the, onto the board itself. Uh, or onto the deck, onto this pegboard deck. And I went ahead and I built some uh, modules in order to mount my Arduino and breadboard. I used a slightly different breadboard, but uh, 
I documented these and I put them up on the uh, Junkbotics GitHub. Uh, but I wanted to kind of show you them and show show you you know what I did in order to build in order to build them. So here's the first one. It's the Arduino. You can see what I have is I have a uh, a piece of foam core on the bottom, and the Arduino is mounted to it. Now it's mounted to it using a using three uh, brass standoffs that I just had hanging around spare from old computers, and uh, on the bottom I then have screws and nuts. And what these allow is that, you know, basically what I did is I took these individual screws and, uh, you know, didn't have any, you know, took the nuts off, of course, and I put them and spaced them inside the holes on my uh, pegboard. And uh, I initially used a piece of pegboard, the, you know, an extra piece, because you saw how much I had in the last video. I had plenty of extra. But you could do it on the surface of your own pegboard or whatever your uh, hole standard is, you know, however you have your hole space. Just put your screws in place there, and then what you do is, since they're in place, you can then take your piece of, uh, your piece of whatever, you know, poster board, or maybe you're measuring a piece of metal or a piece of wood or something. In this case, it's poster board, and I used hot glue. I just glooped some hot glue on top of each one of the screws, and then I placed place the piece down on top of it and let it cool down. And again, like I said, you can find that information out on the uh, on on the Junkbotics GitHub. I've got all of it documented there. So you know, essentially at that point, you know you've got you've got something that you can mount. And uh, you know this can be moved and put anywhere you want it. You know in whatever orientation because it's following the whole the the uh, whole standard. And uh, once you have it wherever you want it. You can then take the, in, the individual nuts and tighten them down on the bottom. Just reach underneath and tighten them down, and now you have and now you have it mounted. I did the same thing with the with with a, with a little breadboard, and I transferred the circuit that we had uh, over to it. And uh, this is the same kind of a deal. It just uh, you know just you know except this one's right in an inch size because it's a very small breadboard, and uh, it's the same kind of setup. It's just a little small piece of uh, foam core and uh, just glued down and then I glued the uh, breadboard onto it. Now finally, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a sensor version one of these and what it's going to be is it's going to be that ultrasonic sensor but I'm going to mount it onto a servo so I can use a servo and scan the ultrasonic sensor in various uh, directions, you know, essentially around the front of the robot to be able to sense what's kind of in a half, you know, half circle dimension of, of in front of the robot. And uh, you could do that or, you know, if you had multiple uh, ultrasonic sensors, you could, you, could, you could certainly have multiple ultrasonic sensors and not scan at all. But the, 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 the principle is the same of using a little small piece of whatever, you know, in this case foam core and some, some screws and, you know, some hot glue. And um, building it in such a way that you can mount it anywhere on your whole standard, you know, in this case, uh, this pegboard standard. And I'm going to build it so that I can mount the uh, servo with the ultrasonic sensor on it, essentially up front here, but I can move it anywhere if I wanted to. And, um, you know, then it will be, uh, it'll be ready to interface to the Arduino in order to get the information back from the sensor. So that's what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to first do is build a small module out of this scrap piece of foam core in order to hold my servo to the front of my robot, kind of in the position that it already is. Once I have that done, then I'll be able to build a carrier board that I can mount to the servo horn and then attach to that carrier board my ultrasonic sensor. So let's first build this module and then we'll work on the carrier board for the ultrasonic sensor afterward. So I've measured and cut some pieces of foam core here that I'm going to now assemble. I've just got this uh, little small piece. It's about an uh, inch and a half on a side. And then uh, these two little small spacers that I cut. They're about, uh, about a half inch long and maybe a quarter inch wide. They're just to space the uh, front and back of this servo on the thing. So uh, I'm going to just put a little bit of hot glue on each one of these and position them in place. Doesn't need to be a lot. Mount that one down just like that. Get some 
hot glue on this one. Again, doesn't need to be a lot. Now with that one down, just like that. Kind of get these uh, hot glue web off here, and so now we just have a little piece like that. And we can take our servo and fit it right in between. It just uh, kind of fits in there, just like that. And from here, we can just add a little bit of hot glue. To hold it in place. I'm not going to do that just yet, though, because the first day, uh, I think I want to. I think I want to get the. Uh, I think I want to get the uh, hold down uh, bolts on in place first. Um, so we have here. I have a piece of, have a piece of pegboard, that I uh, put the uh, that I put the hold down bolts on, and I'm just going to put some glue on top of those, and I've marked a center line on to uh, this on both sides. Got one on that side and one on that side, so I can align it with the bolts pretty easily, or at least that's the that's the idea anyhow. So we'll get to do that with some hot glue. Here you want to kind of be a little generous with your hot glue, and then take this and align it up just something like that, and yeah, just like. Yeah, right like that. And that can just uh, kind of sit there and uh, cool down. And then we can, while that's doing that, we can just uh, put this uh, servo in place by plopping some glue onto it, front and back. Actually, front and or that side and a little bit on the each side here, one there, and a little bit here. Doesn't need to be a lot, just enough to hold it in place. And that more or less is basically our servo mount. We just have to do a little bit, maybe a little bit of extra glue here and there to make sure it's all nice and solid on there, you know, we don't want to fall it off or anything. And then some, uh, probably some extra glue on the uh, on the heads of the bolts so that they don't fall off. Uh, I know how to do all this on the uh, Junkbotics GitHub site. There's a document on how to build these little small modules. And um, it describes, you know, exactly how you want to do this kind of a thing. So uh, I just wanted to show you how, how it's, you know, how easy it can be just for uh, this, uh, you know, just to do it like this out of just simple foam core. It doesn't need to be anything special unless you really want it to be. So uh, once this uh, once this uh, is all uh, nice and glued up properly, I'm going to then uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, build the uh, mount for the ultrasonic sensor, and uh, I'll be back whenever I have that done. So see you soon. All right, so now I have my little piece of uh, carrier board PCB uh, cut. It's uh, nice and small, just the right size I need it. It'll be, I'm going to solder solder the uh, ultrasonic sensor to it. It'll be sitting something like that. I, you know, kind of like that. And then I've got a little four pin header that I'm also going to solder to the other end. And uh, that will allow me to uh, attach wires onto, onto it. And uh, then run those wires back to wherever I need them. So I'm going to get to uh, soldering this next, and uh, then we can get this whole thing mounted up, and you can see what it'll look like. Okay, so here I have my now completed uh, carrier board and uh, ultrasonic sensor. So what I need to do now is get that mounted onto the servo horn. But before I can do it, mount it onto the servo horn, I have to mount the servo horn onto the servo, because once this is mounted once the servo horn is mounted to the board i won't have access to the hole anymore the carrier board is going to cover it up so what i need to do is mount this to the uh, to to the servo and it needs to be in the position that i want it to be when the servo is in the neutral position or when it's centered and uh, that happens whenever the pulse width is 1500 milliseconds 
microseconds, microseconds, my apologies, 1500 microseconds, and that needs to, uh, that needs to be set first, so that I can, so that I can uh, do, so that I, so that I know that it's already set, and that way whenever I put this and press this down and then put the screw in, I know that it's set. So in order to do that, I have here a, uh, well, it's basically a, a servo tester, just a cheap little tool. And uh, all I have to do is plug this into uh, one of the, one of the uh, particular slots and then uh, turn it on. And uh, I don't know if you heard that, but the servo uh, started up. It's uh, set at uh, 800, um, which is completely in one direction. I need it in the middle. Fortunately, this little tool has a particular setting that I can just hit select and it goes to 1500 and uh, that that means that I know that it's now centered and I can turn the power off and know that the servo is properly centered then all I have to do is take the servo horn and position it how I need it which I need it kind of basically crosswise and I need to get it just right kind of fit it in there now, no servo is absolutely perfect, and this one is, isn't is either. Um, so it's going on there, and there it's snapped in place. And you can see that it's, well, it's not quite 90 degrees to the servo body, but it's close enough. And uh, then all I have to do is take the little, little servo horn screw, put it in place, grab a small screwdriver, and just screw it in place. And there it is. So now it's all attached. And all I have to do now is just, uh, well, just basically attach this uh, servo horn to the, bottom of, to the bottom of this PCB, which I'm going to do with some hot glue. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so there it is mounted with hot glue. It's all attached properly. I've got it facing the right direction. I wanted the wires to come out the back or toward the rear so that they weren't uh, obstructing the view of the uh, ultrasonic sensor. Now all I have to do is basically unscrew the mounting screws and uh, put it on put it on the uh, put it on the body of the robot or on the uh, on, on the uh, yeah whoa <laughs> on the deck of the robot. That's what I wanted to say. All right, so uh, here we go. Just leave that laying there. It'll be all right, I hope. And uh, there we go, just like that. And uh, we can just put it in place just like that. And uh, ultimately put these screws in place. I won't bore you with that, that particular nature. But uh, you know, to give you an idea of what it's going to do, Whenever it's, uh, you know, whenever it's, you know, if this was actually hooked up to a, to a, uh, you know, to an embedded system and everything, I'd have the, I'd have the servo, I'd have the servo be scanning or whatnot. So, uh, you know, I can use my tester to kind of show you what it'd look like. Turn it on, oh, and there it went to 800 again. And, you know, you can just, uh, it could just scan back and forth kind of like that. This also has a mode to uh, allow it to go back and forth. So, you know, that's kind of what it would look like. It'd be sending out pings, you know, bouncing the signal back to be able to know if something's in front of it. And uh, probably move a little bit faster than that, maybe something closer to that. I don't know. You know, we'll see what happens. But uh, that's uh, basically how you'd be, how you'd set things up to mount sensors onto your robot. You know, you would just... Uh, Build your little modules, mount your sensors to whatever you need to, and then put those in place inside your uh, whole system. And that's basically it. Alright, well that's it for this tutorial series for right now. I'm going to be starting a new tutorial series, also involving robotics, and I think you'll like it whenever I get it, when I get it started at least. Um, so be sure to subscribe so you can uh, find out whenever that happens. Um, you know, this has been a really fun thing to do so far, and I'm not going to stop with this. This isn't done by far, but, uh, you know, I wanted to get on to, uh, some other, some other projects and whatnot, and, uh, I think I've taken this, uh, far enough for you guys to, uh, well, you guys can replicate it. Use your own parts and everything. 
and I'd love to see what you guys come up with. So, you know, let me know in the comments and everything, you know, what you, what you have. And, you know, if you, you know, if you come up with your own vehicle and whatnot and what you're doing with it, I really would like to see that. Um, you know, so, you know, until, you know, until late, you know, until, you know, well, I guess until next time, I guess I just want to say this. Remember, keep calm and keep junking. Thank you for watching this video, and uh, we'll see you guys later, okay? Bye. <laughs>